Hi, I'm David from Rublets.com. Behind the camera we've got James. Say hello James. I thought today that we would brew a Cellar 7 Sauvignon Blanc 30 bottle 7 day, that's 7 day wine kit. Allegedly this is ready to drink in 7 days so I thought we'd give it a go. What are we going to need then to brew all this up? We're going to need a couple of buckets, we're going to need a simple siphon, a spoon, thermometer, hydrometer and a trial jar for our hydrometer. We're also going to need something to sterilise everything with, so here I've got a tub of sodium metabisulfate. And then we're going to need something to put it in, so we're going to need 30 wine bottles, 30 corks, and here's my good old trusty corker. Right, so, one final ingredient that we need when we're doing this, we of course need a bit of wine for ourselves. So, let's get brewing! So before we go any further, let's take a look at what we get inside our box. Right, well in here, we've got a big packet of yeast and yeast nutrient. We've got a clear packet, which is called Finings Number 2. Oh, we've got this big beauty here of our concentrated grape juice. We've got another little sachet of something called Findings Number no. One. And we've also got this sachet, uh, which they're calling a stabilizer. We've also got our instructions. Pretty simple instructions to follow as well. Right, well, that's everything we've got in the box. So let's get brewing. It's imperative that you sterilise everything so that no one wanted bacteria get in and spoil the wine. Now if you're not familiar with how to sterilise things then take a quick look at our other video on how to sterilise. Once you've done that, come back. So, I've got my bucket here and I've sterilised this already. And what we're going to do now is we're going to open up our carton of concentrated grape juice and we're just going to pour it in. This smells like a sweet shop. So much sugar. We now need to add another 16 litres of lukewarm water to bring it up to a total of 21 litres. Now, to do this, the water needs to be at about 20 degrees, so I've been using my thermometer here, and I've managed to get my tap running at 20 degrees. So I'm going to add uh, another 16 litres of lukewarm tap water. There's one. What I'm also going to do, because there's still going to be a few uh, dribbles of grape juice in our container, I'm going to swirl that out. Ooh. Swirl that out with another litre of lukewarm water. And as you can probably tell, I really do need to get a new jar. Right, that's two. Uh, why don't you come back when I've got up to 21 litres? Now that we've brought it up to 21 litres, I've taken a sample in our trial jar and I've popped in our hydrometer so I can check the specific gravity. And that's coming out at 1.081. Keep a note of this somewhere. Um, I'm gonna put this in my little notebook so that when it comes to the end of fermentation, I can check it again, and then it will tell me how much alcohol is in the wine. Now that we've got our bucket filled to 21 litres, it's now time to add our yeast and yeast nutrient. And all we're gonna do, open the packet, Gonna get sprinkled on. In it goes. And now we need to give it a good stir. What we do now is we pop on the lid 
Um, on my lid though, I've got a bubbler, which is an airlock. And if you come in here, James, you'll see that at the bottom, I've got a small amount of fluid. And this is a sodium metabisulfate solution, which is what I use to sterilize everything. And that's gonna stop any unwanted bacteria and bugs getting in. And what it's also gonna do is the gas escapes as the yeast makes carbon dioxide, the gas is gonna escape through there, and you'll see lots and lots of bubbles coming through. And that's why it's called a bubbler. So all we do is pop that in the top of our bucket. Our lid goes on. And now we pop this somewhere warm, about 20 degrees, and we'll come back to this on day five. It's day five, and we're now at the next stage of siphoning the wine from our first fermentation bucket into the second one. But before we do that, we need to check the specific gravity. And mine here is coming out in my trial jar at 0.992, so it's telling us it's ready to siphon. So all we're going to do is take my simple siphon, we're going to pop it in the top here. We don't want to pop it down too far because there's quite a bit of sediment in the bottom, we don't want to disturb that. And all we do is give a good suck. And there you go. It's going to take a bit of time to siphon this through, so uh, we'll come back when this bucket's filled up. I finished siphoning off the wine from our first bucket into our second bucket and this has left behind quite a lot of sediment at the bottom of our first bucket. We didn't want any of that. Right, don't need that any longer so let's get rid of that. What we now need to do is in this wine here there's quite a lot of carbon dioxide still dissolved and to help with clearing of the wine we need to get one of our spoons which we've sterilised and that needs a good stir to get rid of all that carbon dioxide. So all we're going to do, give it a good stir and you'll see lots and lots of bubbles start to come to the surface. We need to keep doing this for about a minute and then after we've done it for a minute we stop and we give it a rest and then we come back and we do this again. And we'll do this probably two or three times over the next 10 minutes or so. Just getting any of the dissolved carbon dioxide out. Very, very good workout for your arms. Right, so it's been stirred a few times. I've got most of the carbon dioxide out. And now it's time to add Pack C, which is our stabiliser. And all we're going to do is just open it up. Pop this on top. I'm going to give this a good stir in as well. Right, we now need to leave this for three hours. That's three hours. I'm going to pop the top back on and we're going to leave it here for three hours and then we'll come back and we'll do the next bit. After three hours it's time to add the next ingredient which is pack E also known as findings number one. So all we're going to do is just slice the top off of this pour it in and we'll give this a good stir. Mix it thoroughly in. And then we leave this, put the lid back on and come back in an hour. The next thing we have to do then is add pack F, which is our findings number two. And what this is going to do is this is going to react with the other findings that we added earlier and also all the sediment in the wine to help clear it. Now because of that, we're going to want to put this in a place where we're not going to disturb it again for the next couple of days and so that we can then siphon directly from this bucket into a, another bucket uh, ready for us to bottle. So all we're going to do Slice the top off, and pour in our findings. 
Okay, and now we're going to give it a good stir. Right, once that's thoroughly mixed in, we're going to put the lid on. And now we're going to put this somewhere safe for the next few days where we're not going to move it. And even more importantly, somewhere where we're going to be able to siphon directly from this bucket back into our first bucket that we've cleaned out, sterilised, so that we can get ready for bottling. It's day seven, and our wine's had a couple of days to clear in the bucket. You might want to have a look at this, so come on in, James. It's clear beautifully. It's cleared right down to the bottom, so quick, so fast. So what we're going to do now is we're going to siphon this off of the sediment in the bottom into a second bucket. And this is going to help us so that when we bottle it, we're not going to disturb the sediment in the bottom and so that we don't get any sediment in the bottom of our bottles. So what I'm going to do is I'm using a simple siphon here, and I'm going to pop it in the top, not too far down, because again, as I said, we don't want to disturb the sediment in the bottom, and we give a good suck. Right. It's going to take a little bit of time to uh, filter this through, so why don't you come back when we've filled this bucket up. I've finished siphoning off the wine from our top bucket into our second bucket, and it's left behind quite a bit of sediment, so come on and have a quick look at this, James. This is quite mucky, yucky, horrible sediment. Right, we don't need that anymore, so let's get that out of the way. Right, let's pop this up here. Oh, nice and heavy. So I've taken a sample in our trial jar, uh, so I can check the specific gravity, and that's coming out at 0.994. So we can work out from that, we're looking about 12.5%. Right, it's time to bottle. We've got our 30 bottles here. Okay, they're all different shapes and colors, but they're all still 750 ml. One of the most important things is, is that they will take a cork, and the cork here we're gonna be using uh, is gonna fit in the bottle quite nicely, so we're gonna to need to give a little bit of an air gap underneath the cork. We'll get to that a little bit later. I'm quite lucky with my bucket because I've got a tap on the bottom which means I can fill it straight from the bucket. If yours hasn't, then what you're going to need to use is a simple siphon. And all you're going to do with a simple siphon is take the cap off the end, and that means you can get right down to the bottom of the bucket, and on the other end you're going to need to put the tap so that when you're filling your bottles you can stop the flow when you need to. Right, I'm not going to be using that so let me get that out of the way. Right, so we sterilised our bottles already, and all I'm going to do, come in a bit closer James, is turn our tap on, and I'm going to gradually fill up our bottle, as I said, looking where the cork's going to go, about a centimetre below where the cork would be. So always there. Come on, a little dribble more. So, somewhere to about there, and when we've popped our cork in that, you're going to have a little air gap in the bottom. Okay, I've got a few more bottles to do, so why don't you come back when I fill them all up? I didn't quite fill 30 bottles, uh, but that's probably because we've had some sediment in the bottom, we've racked it off and whatnot. But I thought uh, well, I had a little bit left over, so I thought I would pour some into a wine glass and have a taste. And you can see, the colour, very, very clear, nice strawy colour to it. Actually smells, smells like a Sauvignon. Still got little bits of the couple of chemicals that we used in there. Still got a bit of a bit of a whiff of those coming through, but not not unpalatable. So let's uh, let's have a go. That's actually not bad. It is definitely a Sauvignon. Quite light, quite fruity. Um, almost... A little bit like a Chilean, I suppose. Very nice. Um, very, very quaffable. Right, so, now I'm happy with that, I suppose we better get corking. 
So to cork the wines, I've obviously got some corks, and I've got here my good old trusty corker. And all I'm going to do, literally pop the cork in there, twist it around, and that makes then the cork into a smaller bore so it can fit into the bottle of the wine. Now, on my hard surface, I've put a tea towel, and this makes it to, uh, so that the wine bottle doesn't slip around. And all we're going to do is pop it on the top, a bit of force, and there you go. Easy as pie. First bottle of wine corked. I've got a few more to do now. So there we have it. Our Cellar 7 Sauvignon Blanc bottled and some ready to drink. Um, I'm now going to leave these stood for 48 hours. That will allow the cork to set. And then I'm going to think about putting some labels on them and also some shrink caps as well, which fit over the top. And we shrink those in place using the steam from a boiling kettle just to make them a little, look a bit nicer. And then I'm going to lay them down on their sides and that's going to allow the wine to be in contact with the cork to stop the cork from drying out. Right, so the longer you can leave them, the better they're going to get. Um, although it's, I think it's actually quite drinkable now. If you want to try the Cellar 7, then it's available on our website, brewbits.com. I think it's actually worth a darn good go. A wine that's drinkable in seven days. But if you can leave it a bit longer, I'm sure it's going to improve. Enjoy.